Good morning, Sister Vermel. Good morning to you. Good morning to all of you who are coming on. I pray that you are having a blessed morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. You and I should rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful day it is. Oh my goodness, to be alive in the kingdom of God. If you have not already, go ahead and lift up those hands and thank God for God's grace and his mercy, his love, his protection. I'm telling you, we are recipients of the favor of God. Just the fact, listen, just the fact that you are alive and well with the reasonable portion, and I mean a reasonable portion of your life, health, and strength is a testimony of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And certainly we celebrate who God is in our lives on this beautiful Sunday morning. I am just grateful uh, to have made it to the first Sunday in December of 2022. Good to see you, Overseer Williams. I have called you a couple of times and um, wasn't able to get in your voicemail. So I have been reaching out to you. Let's try to connect again today. Again, uh, blessings to all of you. Uh, just by way of announcement, certainly we thank God for uh, the presence of God that met us on yesterday uh, at Orange Go Grove. Uh, God bless you, Kayana, for sewing already. Uh, also, Redrick Graham, thank you for sewing early this morning. Uh, the presence of the Lord met us in that session on yesterday, and we are going to continue uh, in that vein of the Word of God at 10 a.m. at Orange Grove Miss Missionary Baptist Church in the beautiful city of Durham, North Carolina. I pray that if you're in the Triangle area, that you can meet us at that great celebration. We're going to go straight to the word of the Lord, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The Lord has had this uh, on my spirit since yesterday, and we have already been in the letter of, um, or the epistle that Paul writes to the church at Corinth. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Danita. See you in just a few. Uh, we are continuing to explore this letter that Paul writes to the church at Corinth. Listen to what he says, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Hear me, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm going to stop right there. I just want to encourage you this morning for just a few moments from the subject, we win. You ought to put in the comments, I win. Whatever I'm going through, I am victorious in that because that battle is already won. Paul writes to this church at Corinth for the second time. He's re reiterating what he has um, written to them in the first letter uh, or the first epistle that he writes to the church at Corinth. As we discussed on last week, there were some contentions in the church at Corinth. There were some sexual immoralities in the church at Corinth. There were some lawsuits that had come um, had become an issue against members of the church suing other members of the church. We understand that there were people who were taking advantage of the supper, the Holy Eucharist, uh, really putting at risk of the people and not caring for the body of Christ. Just because some had money, they would eat the meal before others got there. And so that's when uh, uh, Paul says, you, you're not discerning the body of Christ. It's not just about crackers and wafers and co communion juice. This thing is about discerning the body of Christ. And so Paul writes again in this second letter to really reiterate what the doctrine of the church should be because the church had been newly established they were going through warfare not just within the body but they were going through warfare externally 
And I want you to know today, uh, I want to relieve you of the uh, burden that you feel that you're the only one going through something. No, sweetheart, you're not the only one that's going through what you're going through. Many of us are going through the same thing. I know you feel alone. I know you think no one understands fully to the full extent of what you are experiencing. But all of us, every one of us, you and I, we are all going through something. But the good news about going through is that if you're in Christ, you have the testimony or you will soon have the testimony that you win. That God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus, you may not see the victory right now, but trust this woman of God that you are going to come out victorious. Your family is going to come out of the situation that you're in victoriously. The issues that you are facing, give it some time. Let God get in the middle of it because he always works it out. The church is going through warfare in this particular text. And I just like the church uh, in the Old Testament in first century, the church today is going through warfare. And I'm not just talking about the church as an edifice or a church as a location, but I'm talking about us as the church. Know ye not that your body is the temple of God. We are living, breathing epistles being read of men. Don't you, don't you, don't you ever think that you're here by happenstance or by accident. You are here because God needs to plant a church in your job or on your job. You are still here because you are the church in your family. You're still here because God has designated and uh, assigned you to be the church amongst your circle of friends. We're going to go through warfare, church. I, I wish that I could tell you that every day would be like Sunday, but that's not going to happen until we get to heaven. I wish that I could tell you that you're not going to have to experience heartbreak, but I'm sorry. I can't tell you that. I, I wish that I could... Uh, Wave a magic wand and wash all of your disappointment away. But beloved, anytime or while we're in this body, we're going to suffer, especially if you're in Christ. The word of God says you're going to suffer for righteousness sake. But Paul expresses to this church at Corinth that even though we are in warfare, you cannot fight warfare with carnal weapons. Glory to God. Did you hear what I said? You will not be able to fight spiritual principalities with weapons that you can hold in your hand. The weapons that, the, that God has given us to fight on this Christian journey as you, has has, as you have enlisted into the army of the Lord, you're not going to be able to fight with bullets and guns and knives and kung fu strategies. No, the weapons that God has given to us aren't carnal, but they are spiritual weapons, but they are mighty weapons. It's not just one weapon. <laughs> it's just not one weapon because it's not just one fight. It's not just one weapon because there are multiple ways in which the enemy comes against you. And he's not just coming against you to destroy your body. He's coming against you to destroy your faith. He's coming against you to destroy your faith in God so that the generation, the generational curses can continue in your bloodline. He, he wants to destroy your faith in believing that you're not uh, supposed to be wealthy. He wants to keep you in poverty. He wants to keep you uh, with high blood pressure running in your family. He wants to keep you at a level of depression so that you'll never come into the fullness of of what God has called you to be. But but I want to give you just a couple of weapons that God has given to us to fight. First weapon that he's given to us is prayer. I know that you thought it was going to be a little bit deeper than that. 
But the first weapon that God gives us in our arsenal to fight spiritual battles is prayer. Let me tell you something, church. I don't care how many degrees you obtain. I don't care how many connections you, you have in your Rolodex. You are not going to be able to fight this battle with charisma. You're not going to be able to fight this battle with your good looks. You're not going to be able to fight this battle with your money. There are some things that you can't get through unless you pray your way through it glory to God. And God is calling us the church, not just the, the edifice of the church, but we as the church to get back to intentional prayer. My God, my God, there's something about prayer. As I was experiencing an issue on this week on my job, God says, before you stress out about this thing, I want you to pray. Now, I'm not just talking about, you know, uh, these articulate prayers. Sometimes you just need to say, God, help me. Mm, 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 mm. God, work this thing out for me. God, give me peace about this situation. God, help me navigate what I'm supposed to say. If I'm not supposed to say anything, I won't respond to the email. But God, I need your help in this moment. I want you to know that prayer still works. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. I'm telling you, it's a weapon. It's not a carnal weapon. It's a mighty weapon. And I'm telling you, if you're not in a church that prays, you're in the wrong church. If you're in a church that only talks about money and raising money for the pastor and the pastor's family and taking the pastor on vacation and getting his suits tailor made, baby, you are in the wrong church. You need to be in a church and under a shepherd that believes in prayer. You're not going to make it until 2023 without prayer. I got to keep it down because I'm, I'm not by myself. I got people down the hall. I don't want to get too loud. But you got to get back to prayer. We, we got a lot of stuff that, that we're holding above prayer. But I'm telling you, God wants you to get back in communication with him. There's no way that you can communicate with God. And he not communicate with him. We used to sing songs long ago. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Sometimes we need to get back on the main line and stop going to a therapist. I'm, now, let me put, put that in context. I thank God for therapy. I wholeheartedly believe in therapy, but therapy will never replace prayer. Your therapist will never replace the altar. Your therapist session will never replace intercessory prayer. Glory to God. Second tool that God gives us that is not carnal, but is mighty through God is the uh, tenet of fasting. We're going to fast. Go ahead and gear yourself up again. Uh, in January, we will engage in our 21 day fast. So go ahead and start preparing yourselves because what fasting does is silences the flesh. They, 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 they wanted to know why could your disciples, Jesus, not cast the devil out of this boy? He said, there's some things that don't happen unless you go through as intense fasting and prayer. It only comes out through fasting and prayer. And you're trying to fight spiritual battles with carnal weapons. And the reason why you can't break through and the reason why you can't get delivered is because you've got too much chicken on your mind. You've got too much social media on your mind. You've got too much Netflix on your mind. You've got too many friends in your inbox that you are spending that time with. But God says to you today that sometimes you got to come away, shut down everything so that I can reset your mind and reset your bodies. When you start fasting, that high blood pressure will come down. But the problem is we use food as a way to comfort. And what we have created is an idol to keep us company out of food. God says to you today, if you're going to defeat the enemy, the weapons can't be carnal. It can't be things you see. It can't be things that you touch and smell and feel. Some warfare you can only fight with fasting and prayer. Secondly, thirdly, the Lord says, I want to give you uh, some some weapons, some weapons that's going to help you. He, he told me this is quite unconventional. He says that there's a weapon that you can use. It's called self-care. 
I know you thought it was going to be something super spiritual, but the reason why we're going through many of us, what we're going through is because we haven't taken care of our temples. We're trying to take care of everybody else. Come on, church. Paul, Paul is saying you can't touch this weapon. You, you're not going to be good for anybody else if you're not taking care of your mind and your heart. Come on. And your body and your emotions. You can't fight a physical battle if your head is not in the game. That's why some boxers and some, some um, UFC fighters, I believe that's the name of it, they abstain from their wives because they have to have their minds mentally on winning. And sometimes because your mind is scattered, you can't win the battle because you haven't taken care of your mind. Some days you have to take a mental health day. Take the notifications off of your cell phone from your emails unplug so that God can recharge you for the battle. You can't fight a spiritual battle depressed. Come on church. You can't fight a spiritual battle and win when you're walking in confusion. The Bible says a, a, a double-minded man or a double-minded woman is unstable in all his way. You can't fight and swing and knock out the enemy if your mind is scattered. But what God is saying to you today, that as we go into a new year, purpose in your mind, a routine to take, to take care of your temple. I'm rushing because I have another service, but I'm telling you today that God is telling you that sometimes you can't, you can't fight with people because your battle is not in the natural. So you're getting mad at, at people and, and cutting everybody off and disconnecting from family members. Okay, I get it. But at the end of the day, the word of God says iron sharpens iron. And so you've got to have some good relationships and friendships in your life so that you can be sharpened, so that your arsenal can be sharpened with the right type of iron. And that only comes through good relationships. That's my fourth thing. God wants to give you and reconnect you with relationships. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been disappointed. I know you've loved and been disappointed because you had expectations that were not met. But I'm telling you today that God will never leave you. And when you find someone who's operating in the spirit of God, you better link up with that person. It may not be but two or, two or three people. I'm not telling you to go and connect with 10 people. You may not have but two or three friends in your lifetime. But if they are connected with you in the spirit, you can birth something that has never been birthed before. Come here, Mary and Elizabeth. Both of them had something miraculous growing on the inside of them. And when they connected, something on the inside of Mary leaped with something that was on the inside of Elizabeth. And I'm telling you today that God is getting ready to link you with people that have the Holy Ghost just like you. And God is going to use both of you to defeat the enemy in your lives. I'm telling you, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. When you begin to use these tools, you're going to see your life, I'm telling you, increase in areas that you have not yet experienced. They are mighty through God, listen, to the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? Things that have been placed in your life by the adversary to keep you in captivity. But I believe today that there is anointing. There is an anointing on this line. Listen, for strongholds to be demolished, for strongholds to be brought down. The only thing that can do that is the anointing. It is the anointing that destroys every yoke. Again, it's not your money. It's not your friendships. It's not how good you preach. It's the anointing. And if you're going to survive this next season of your life, you have to have the anointing. Father, we thank you. We thank you 
for your word. We're thankful today that we don't have to fight this battle with bullets and guns and with arguments and with fights and defense in the natural. But God, we thank you that the first line of defense that you have given us is a clear path of communication with you. We thank you, oh God, that we have the ability to fast and pray and to seek your face. And God, as we do that, we know that you'll heal not just the land, not just our physical bodies, but everything concerning us. This is our prayer and we pray it in the name of Jesus. I'm, going, I'm telling you today that you are a winner. Don't you feel defeated. You are, you are a winner. God has already won the victory for you and I. All we have to do is walk in in our victory. I just want to see the names of some people who says, I'm going to walk in my victory. Put it in the comment section. If you've got some children that you've been praying for, put their names in the comment section so that we can let the devil know, no, 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 you won't have my child. You won't have my husband. You won't have my marriage. You won't have my career. No, no, no. I win. I win because I am in Christ Jesus. Listen, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have been with us all year long. This is year three and God has blessed us in an amazing way. I want you to get that seed really quickly. I want to know if you all can still hear me. I want to make sure that you all can still hear me. Uh, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. I don't see my comments coming in. Uh, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I want you to go ahead and get that seed and sow it. Go ahead and sow that seed. Uh, we've done this now for about 50 weeks. We've only missed uh, two times together, uh, but I believe that the Lord has blessed you. I want you to go ahead and get that seed and sow it into your winning season. I'm telling you, you win. This is your winning season. You know the avenues in which you can give. Uh, you say, well, no, this is not my pay week. But I want you to know uh, that God blesses even the little that you have. I want you to go ahead and sow. If you cannot, uh, if you don't have a church to worship uh, where you're going to worship today, I invite you to join us at Orange Grove Missionary Baptist Church. If you're in the Triangle uh, area, I think the address there is 505. East End Street. Just Google it, y'all. Just Google it. I should know it by heart because that's my second home. 505, I believe, East uh, End Street in Durham, North Carolina. I love you and I'll see you soon.